Before we get into the show, I just wanted to say from the cast of DND Raw that we hope you are safe and well. The health and safety of our listeners is our top priority, and we want to make sure that we do our part to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Now, better known as coronavirus, this disease has spread throughout the world. There are a few ways to help lower the spread of this respiratory disease. Wash your hands, avoid touching your face, including mouth, nose, and eyes, and cover your coughs and sneezes. Monitor your symptoms and consult with your doctor. Stay home and away from other sick people except for medical care. Clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces. For more information, please visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. For the podcast, we plan to continue releasing episodes on our regular schedule and keep recording new adventures with our characters remotely. You can also send letters to Leuven at dm at dndraw.com right now. More details on that during the episode. If you enjoy the adventures of our characters in Ostia and our show about the rules for 5th edition, support us on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you will get exclusive content and updates. If you're interested in a look behind the curtain of how we keep track of all of our quests, we are going to be releasing our player's to-do list document for each session to all patrons going forward. This includes our plans for which characters need to have a heart-to-heart, what letters are they writing to family at home, and which NPCs can't be trusted. Beyond that, higher tiers get DM's notes, bloopers from our episodes, and to add an item or NPC to a D&D Raw episode. We are especially grateful to our producer tier patrons who listen to our audio before anyone else to give feedback and shape the final episode. We want to give a special thanks to Johnny Torres, for serving as a producer on this episode. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash dndraw. Next week will be Serviceable Plots, episode 43. Join us now for Serviceable Plots, episode 42, a tool of intimidation. And with me today are the following players. Hi, I'm Bethany, and I'll be playing Belinda Walsingham, the half-elf awakened mystic. Hi, this is Adam, and I will be playing Akiva Khonshu, the Shadar Kai Hexblade Warlock. Hi, I'm Jane, and I'm playing Nissa Turin, the Gnome Arcane Trickster Rogue. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm playing Scribner Shannon Whitecliffe, the Human Rogue Fighter. Last time. After a quick sparring match with strides and moments, Scriv had the chance to speak to his old friend and mentor, who commented on the change to Scriv's blade, a gift from strides and moments himself. Eventually, the party had the opportunity to speak with the Grand Master of the Monastery, Sildan. After discussing the upcoming fight with Tenebris, Sildan explained how his friend Saria was using a team of mystics to help eliminate the Whispered Ones, and shared some insight into the hierarchy of that treacherous group. The party even learned that the white dragonborn they met in the cave near Veripol was the same person who had been a patron to Scriv's friend, Orlay. With reassurance surveyed from Sildan, the party agreed to share a meal with the monks before returning to Orenthal. So you guys are in the mess hall. You notice that there's like no, like all, it doesn't matter the ranking of the monk. They're all sitting like together. There doesn't seem to be any sort of arrangements uh, of, of seating here. It's just kind of open and everybody is equal here type of feel. I figure we should not sit with the Grand Master since we had this really intense private conversation with him. Probably it's good to have some space. I want to sit with strides and moments. He will find you. Hello. Might I sit here? Yes. Okay, if he's finding us, do we want to try and sit with, like, Rolf and his student? You see Rolf and, and his student nearby. Yeah, I guess if, if, if he's going to join us wherever we sit, we can sit with them. What's the food like? It's farm to table esque. You notice a lot of people there. Like when they get the trays of food, will take some and offer it to the next person, and they will do the same, and they will do the same. I will do the same. I offer Nissa some food. Would you like some of my food? Why? Thank you. How kind. <laughs> Akiva, you want some food? Yes, thank you. I'll offer some to Strides in moments. I will offer some to Rolf. And so on and so forth. <laughs> and, so <laughs> and so on and so forth. <laughs> Well, uh, Strides of Owens, I, I think you and Scrip had a good talk earlier. I'm sorry, we didn't get to speak with you much. Yes, we had quite an enlightening conversation. Really? Well, I'll, I'll look forward to hearing more about that. I'll give Scrip a knowing look. <laughs> I will focus on my meal, enjoying the bit of nostalgia that eating in this place brings me. How long have you been here, Strides and Moments? The better part of a decade. 
So you didn't grow up here, though? No, I grew up in the Feywild. Of course. <laughs> well, I, I just noticed that many people seem to be very young here. Their formative years spent uh, in training. Many continue on to become a Kensei, but some simply wish to train with some of the weaponry and then move on, as Shannon did. I never actually mastered a weapon when I studied here. I diversified. It's nice to have lots of tools at your disposal. Yeah, I always have a right tool for the right situation. This sort of communal living experience is very foreign to me. I'm not used to being surrounded by so many people. My time was spent mostly solitary. Oh, you're almost never alone here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day when you go to sleep, but that is all. What about you, Nissa? Did You grew up with lots of other people, right? Yeah. Grew up in an orphanage, so not much, not much time alone, mostly. I'm sure you form some unique bonds at experiences like this. Yeah. In fact, I need to check up on a couple of old friends if I get time. Back at Orenthal? Well, I don't know whether one of them will still be in Orenthal or not, or whether he's moved on. I need to try and catch up with him. Maybe when we get back. Yeah, it'd be, be nice if we got time. Akiva, does this help you understand Scriv even more? I know you already have learned his childhood stories. Yeah, it gives me a different insight into, I guess, his training, where he comes from in terms of his skills. I assume it's not like this, where you grew up. <laughs> no. Where did you grow up, Akiva? The Shadowfell. Oh. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty evident to me that I, if I tried to make something up, I'd probably be seen through pretty quickly. Or here, at least. I know historically. I've heard tales that our people don't get along. Your people follow a god of death. Yeah. There are specific reasons for it. I know. I understand that. My people tend to follow Vumera, but... Well, we say follow Vumera, we are not subservient to Vumera. Unlike your people to Nezalem. In recent times, I've come to understand a lot of different perspectives on my people. I don't necessarily think that I fall in line with their way of thinking anymore. I mean, I never really did, but... You're definitely much different than any of your people that I have met before. For one thing, you smile. Any sort of emotion is at least a little bit closer to my people. Yeah. Got a lot of weird looks back home. For smiling? Smiling is... I wouldn't say impossible. It's more... You can see cracks in the... The neutrality. I mean... I'm sorry, but I hate your home plane. I'm not a big fan of it myself. There's no life there. No. I, I've enjoyed my time here on the material plane infinitely more than I did in the 300 years I spent back home. What is the relationship between Fumera and the people of the Feywild? She is in the Feywild, but she establishes no dominion there. She simply exists to be closer to life. So there is no one-on-one -on -one communication with Fumera? We know she is in the Feywild. That is all that we know of her. She does not rule us. She is not some deity to be, you know, focused on and followed at every whim. Though she has many whims, and they change regularly. With the seasons. Indeed. Well, there's always different ways to worship and look at things. We all have arrived where we are, following different paths. There are many roads to arrive at where we are. With or without the gods. And I look over at Nyssa. Ah, you are not a believer in the gods. I believe the gods are around. I don't particularly hold with any of them. That'd be silly to not believe in them, so I'm glad at least there's that. I'm just not a fan of them, I see. No. Oh, to each their own. Any particular reason why you are not a fan of the gods? I just don't really feel like they've had a hand in my life at all, so I don't feel like I should pay them any attention. It's probably fair. The gods tend to pay very little attention to individual people. Well, I mean, that's not always true. There are lots of famous clerics through history who are particularly chosen by their gods for special tasks. Some pay very much attention to a select few. The rest are, in general, looked at. Weighed, measured, found wanting. That's Nezalem's job. Yeah, I'm starting to see that. Well, I'm sorry, we didn't mean to ruin this polite conversation by bringing up religion. I suppose we could also speak of politics, if that would really get things off on the right foot. Have you heard of the recent dealings from the king of the Vremerex Empire? There's a slight smirk as he's like, I'm kidding. We care not for such things. <laughs> I am not one for politics. I am one for improving oneself. And this is why we are friends. I grew up in the Vremer expansion. I didn't have to deal with the politics that are present in Orenthal. I grew up here. Everyone is a straight shooter. Everybody speaks plainly. Well, there's something to be said for layers of meaning. We're able to accomplish the things we do because we're thoughtful about what we say and who we say it to. But it all gets so complicated. 
It's all so complicated. Yes, you're correct. Everything is complicated. That is all of our references to past and what brought us here. It's all complex and someone has to keep track of it all and make sure we're staying on the correct path. But who decides the correct path? We make the best choices we can with the information we have. We can only take responsibility for ourselves. I agree to that. So, strides and moments, I'm sure you sat and ate with us because you wanted to speak of such serious things. I simply wanted to speak more with Shannon and get to spend some time with him while he is here. So, Rolf, what was it like, I guess, did you grow up in the monastery? Yes, I grew up here. Uh, I've been here for most of my life. What was that like? Rather peaceful. You do engage with the hostile individual ever so often, considering the jobs that we go on, but... Oh, yeah, I can imagine, with, uh, generally protective duty. It is, uh, rather exciting, but most of the time it is rather boring and important figures doing important things. And what about, what did you say your name was again? Pointing to the... I'm Aelith. How long have you been here? I come to visit every so often, but it's been about a year now. Any particular training that you've specialized in? They just teach me whatever fighting style I can. I like scimitars, though. I think of, uh, I've seen one or two users of a scimitar before. It's always almost like a dance whenever I see it being wielded. Bandits tend to use scimitars a lot, but I don't really like, because they're like all clunky. I want to use it and just be able to take someone out really quickly and just deal with them if they're a problem. She's said half elf, right? Yeah. So what do you use? That's a really, like, kopesh. That's not a normal weapon around here. No, it's more, uh, I would say it's traditional for my family. That's kind of the excuse I use when I'm talking to not people who can see through Because you're lives. a Shadar Kai, right? Yeah. Um, it's an artifact uh, that my people guarded, watched over, avoided with their lives. It handles like a battle axe, so I've been told. Okay. I've never really used a battle axe. I tend to use quicker weapons. I can't tell you how I use it, um, as Shannon can tell you. Um, we've sparred a couple times. I kind of just will it. Hi, Shannon. Hello. It's a pleasure to meet you. So you use... Oh, that's a Yadagon. Yeah. It's a special type of short sword, right? Short saber, yeah. Bladed on one side, decently balanced, handles more like a large knife, similar to a cookery. I haven't tried one of those. Maybe I should try one of those. I feel so out of place here with everyone comparing their weapons. Well, you don't use weapons much, do you? Nope. You don't have any weapons on you, the only reason I ask. I mean, except for that dagger. That's correct. Are you, like, sneaky? No. Excuse me? I know a lot of people that tend to be really quick, and they uh, go for, like, vital points. She specializes in more um, medicine and heals and, yeah. Oh. Are you a cleric? Nope. Oh. Well, because, and she points to you, Nissa. I mean, you look like the sneaky type. I mean, you've got a couple of daggers and stuff. I try my best at the sneaky, yeah. So wait, you're not a cleric, and you can heal people? Do you use, like, druid magic or something? I'm trained. Not in druid magic. No magic here. Oh. I'm just a regular person. Thanks for rubbing it in. Roll deception. It's a natural one, so it's a total of seven. I mean, if you don't want to tell me, that's fine. You're a little inquisitive for me, I'm sorry. I just look over at Strides and Moments, who is observing this all very quietly. <laughs> he looks a little bit amused, but overall, yes, he's quiet. So, okay, so you use... So wait, how do you... Uh, look, turning back to you, Akiba. How do you not know how to use a kopesh, but you use a kopesh. Okay, sorry, just to cut you off, I know you're just apparently a naturally inquisitive person, you have a lot of things you want to know, but you're asking us the sort of questions you ask someone before you try to murder them. I'm not trying to- why would I try to murder you? You haven't done anything wrong. Does Rolf have any semblance of expression on his face right now? Uh, a little bit of amusement, and he kind of at about this point is putting a hand on her shoulders. Hey, Lith. Don't bother them. I was like, I, I'm curious about the fighting style that he has. He uses, he still said he uses a Kopesh that he doesn't actually know how to use, but is able to use it. He's a natural. But usually you know how to use a thing before. It's odd. I kind of just swing it. It sort of comes naturally to me. Who's your patron? Uh. Can I speak to her telepathically? Go for it. Let me give you some advice. Don't ask dangerous questions of strangers. <laughs> I mean, I, usually I just ask a bunch of questions and people give stuff up and then I can figure them out if they're bad or if they're good. Interesting that you're a psionic, though. Please don't share that. I'm offering you some information. I hope that is enough for you. But please don't continue asking. I tend to be able to keep secrets really well. Really? Because it doesn't feel like it. What have I told you about me? You're making us reveal our secrets in front of others. We're trying to. This place is safe. There's no one here that's a problem. I've checked. In what way? Can you see their auras, too? If I answer that, will you stop asking questions of 
my friend. Yeah, I can leave him alone. Yes, yes I can. Okay. We've been doing a lot of things that require secrecy. Yeah, I'm not going to tell anybody. Do they know that you can speak telepathically? I don't know you. I'm Aleth. So they're so they're having the telepathy stare off. By this point, you guys could realize, oh, she's speaking telepathically to her. And judging by the fact that she's not freaking out, can I infer things about her or no? Because every other time we've had a telepathic thing, they've looked surprised and shocked. I would allow you to make that assumption. I'll look over to Rolf. She's not just here to train as a kensei. Am I wrong? He just leans in a little bit closer and goes, Don't mention you know her outside of here. I will nod. Continue eating my food, because everybody's learning all these things. How old is Aelith? Look. Oh, she's she's young, but she's like 20s, not. Okay, I was like, she's not actually a child, just to clarify. No, she's like, she basically looks late teens, early 20s. What did she look like again? Short, cropped blonde hair, light blue eyes, soft golden skin. Uh, the soft golden skin, it seems more like she's just gotten tan from being outside a lot. The athletic build, fair skinned. Were you born with your powers? Yeah. Were you born with yours? No. Oh. How'd you get them? It's something I kept as a secret. Was your family experimented on? Were you experimented on? Nope. I was given my powers by my deity. Oh. I don't know deities could do that. At least not these kind of powers. Usually they give cleric powers when they give powers. Yeah. I did not grow up somewhere like here where I was protected and kept safe from outsiders. If you ever leave here, be careful. Oh, I don't, I mean, I don't normally live here. I used to travel around a lot, but I stay here a lot. I did not mean to be hostile. I'm just trying to protect myself and maintaining secrecy about who I am has been essential to that safety. I don't like that being assaulted. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I mean, I understand. I tend to have to be quiet about myself, too. At least the monks tell me to. I'd listen to them. Yeah, they're older and wiser than me and all of that, but sometimes I just know I know better. After Scrib would have uh, made that comment to Rolf, I would have been like, so this seems like a place where there's a lot of information shared, and it should not be shared outside of here. Rolf just says, well, there are plenty of things that are shared equally amongst all members here, and of course there are things that are not. I like this place. Good. If you ever wish to learn how to be a kensei or how to train as a monk... You are more than welcome here. I will think on it. Thank you. Particularly since you are not here to see someone die. There is a little smile. I'm going to say, Aleph, are you able to talk to multiple people at once? Oh, yeah. You can do that one, too. Yeah. So I'll telepathically ping the group. Who's all in on this? So I'm guessing she shared that she can speak telepathically with you? Yeah, she mentioned that she could do it, too. Wait, two? Aleph is a mystic. She was born as one. Sorry, I said that weird. Okay... So can you tell me who your patron is now? We're sharing a secret. I told you one of my secrets. Don't know. It's not a lie. I don't know. Also, this is quite the bargain. She's using one secret for multiple people and getting four different secrets. I feel uh, here it's not the worst place to share some secrets. No, it's pretty safe here. I mean, they protect me whenever I'm here, so... What do you do when you're not here? I usually hang out with my parents. Who are they? Sorry, that's one of the secrets I can't tell. Sorry, are your parents someone whose names we would recognize? Roll persuasion. Ten. <laughs> Maybe. I think we can guess. If she doesn't want to say, then... Oh, who do you think it is? Well, if you don't want to say, then I don't. Are you going to work for her eventually? Roll one more persuasion check. Seventeen. I mean, when my dad visited me last, he said he would take me back to see her once they were done. Well, since you've had these powers your whole life, you're probably a lot more powerful than I am. Am I? Oh, man. Wait, how long have you had your powers? Just over a year. So wait, have you not practiced with her? Wait, has she? have you not met her? No. My mom likes people like you, so... People who are well-read? Yeah. They know a lot. She's a huge fan of the history of, like, Orenthal and stuff like that. What's the most impressive thing you can do? I mean, impressive in what way? Like, hurt people impressive? Because I can, like, hurt a lot of people pretty badly, or I can make them believe something. Tell me a story about how you could, uh, change someone's mind. Oh, well, I mean, it's not so much changing someone's mind. It's just spending time and talking with them, and then eventually they believe something that I tell them. Does it fade? I mean, usually I'm not around them for that long, but I think it lasts for, like, a couple of days? 
Is this just because you can, or is there a purpose to this? No, it's more just because I learned how to do it. Well, because I learned I can find out someone's memories, and then I figured out how to flip it and put something there. It's small. It's not like a big memory. Can you control what people do? Not really, no. I just help to push them if they're being bad. Well, it sounds like we have some different expertise. Can you... Well, you don't use weapons, do you, right? Sorry, Um, I don't know if... You may be able to learn this, but you can put, like, your power into a weapon. Seems unnecessary. Well, my mom's good at it, and it hurts people. I usually try not to hurt people. Yeah, if you don't have to, you don't. But, you know, if you need to... Is there a thing that's like a psychic smirk? So actually, I would say due to kind of what's happening, you all are kind of not even just in a telepathic thing. You're mentally picturing an entirety of a room as you're having this conversation. We're in the mind palace, is what you're saying. Akiva, you've seen a mind palace, her mind palace. This seems like kind of a collaboratively formed one as they're speaking. Wait, what's the style of her mind palace? Because I don't think it's the same as mine. (laughs) No, but she seems to be, like, shifting hers as you're you're forming yours. So, wait, is it like we're sitting at the table talking normally, but now we begin having this telepathic conversation? Does Is it like everything starts to sort of fall away and shift? For you, Belinda, you're used to this. You're used to kind of being in both places at once. You can be in your mind palace and be out. It's just less focused on what's going on in the exterior. The rest of you, there's almost a disconnect, and you kind of are bouncing a little bit back and forth. Squiv, you have a sense of this because you've done a little bit of brain training with Belinda. Nissa, this is brand new to you. Which you are both hearing what is being said at the table and hearing telepathically and seeing what is at the table and seeing in this strange place in your mind. Like, you can picture it, but you're also not really there. I've changed my mind. I don't want these powers. (laughs) (laughs) This seems to just be, like, kind of an effect of the connection that both of them have. Okay. Sorry, I just prefer not to have to use weapons. So you can attack directly? If necessary. Okay. I've learned, like, some simple ones of that. They're pretty effective. Well, I've got one that can hurt a lot of people if I really need to. How many is a lot? How many are we talking? Uh, it's like, it's gotta be, like, near me, so, but it's like, and she kind of, like, mentally seems to create, like, an image of her gesturing. It's like, I think uh, 60 feet away from me? That could be useful. Do you want to see it? I mean, not use it, but like, do you want to get an under... You can see my memory, right? Can you do that? Actually, can you see memory? My mom can see memory. Yes, yeah, I can see memory. Can she... I know we don't have a specific mechanic for this. Can she sort of display it for everybody in the Mind Palace? Is there a Mind Palace projector screen? As as you kind of mentioned, like she can make, like, images of whatever she can imagine in the mind palace so yeah so like kind of out from the floor you see like these almost wispy spectral images that she shows a display as a pulse goes out this this pulse echoes out that kind of shakes like this wide swath of people who all just grip their heads it's like yeah it can hurt them a lot and mentally you're kind of getting this uh, display also towards you, Belinda, because you have a better understanding of how psionic abilities work. But there is this um, understanding of not like, right now you focus on individual minds. You don't focus on an area. You had the sensation of focusing on an area when you sent your telepathy out. And she's like instructing you along those same lines a little bit on sending like the the same way you harm a person, but just push it out, force it out into others' minds, and rather than damaging a single person, harming a lot of people. Okay. Seems cool. It's impressive. By the way, you still hear conversation and you can respond to conversation at the table. It just probably takes all of you an extra second or so to respond than I normally would. I'm remaining engaged in this because this is free practice. Have you ever fought anyone like you? Well, my mom trained me a little bit just kind of to protect myself. Mainly she taught me that one in case like a bunch of people were coming at me because there's lots of bandits on the road and all that. And if I'm ever by myself, it's a way I can, I can first try and scare them away. But if that doesn't work. Oh, I, I've got an example for that for you. Oh, really? I'll play the, the bandit memory for her. Oh, that's a good, I like that. Okay. So that's how you can hurt him without necessarily killing him. Cause this attack really hurts. Yeah. Though just to warn you, it will probably make the people around you fear you. If they're bad, that's okay. Beg to differ. 
I don't know. Most of the people that I I spend time with like aren't afraid of me. I mean, my mom is crazy powerful, but I guess it doesn't matter anymore because you you can you're trustworthy, right? You're not going to share this information. And she kind of goes and does this almost mocking, like intense stare at all of you. And for a brief second, except for Belinda, all of you think like she grows for a second larger and her eyes glow. I would say we're quite trustworthy. Okay. My mom's Saria. Yeah, I know. <laughs> my dad's Thovin. I can cast spells too. I've, I like, he's, my dad's really good at spell casting, so he taught me a few. So you're also a wizard? I suppose uh, you've been pretty lucky then. Yeah, I have. What are you going to do with this? I don't know. I help my mom whenever I can, but she didn't want me to go help her on this uh, last one that she went on. Sildan mentioned he hasn't heard from your mom in a while. Yeah, me neither. My dad's come by. Uh, it was a few months back, but they've been busy, apparently. The, whatever it is that they're dealing with is really dangerous, so they didn't want me there. So what do you do with your time? I mean, I study here. Mostly, I, just, I mean, here with Uncle Sildan, he, he kind of tries to keep me here. I help him out, too, whenever there's something, like, big to work on, but... But with all that power and experience... Surely you must have goals and things you want to accomplish. Yeah. I mean, growing up, I've seen what the Whispered Ones can do, and dealing with them would be great, but I don't know. Whatever my mom was working on most recently. Sorry, I didn't mean to question your, your life choices. It just, I found a lot of satisfaction in working. But not everybody is as capable as you, even in terms of non psionic powers. It's something she'll have to find out on her own. Do you ever just want to do something? Sometimes, yeah, but, you know, us, okay, Uncle Sildan takes good care of me, and we stay here because, well, he and my mom are really good friends. And he's done a lot for me growing up, so I owe it to him. Of course, yeah, sorry, didn't mean to question that. And so they keep you busy, and you learn, and you grow, and adapt your abilities. Yep, I help out wherever I can. I help them when I can. If I find out something I can take care of myself, I go and take care of it myself. Do you want to go fight the Whispered Ones? Yes, but I don't- I'm not really allowed to leave right now. I mean, I can go. That's not like they're gonna really stop me. What are you suggesting, Belinda? I'm saying, Aleth, you could come with us. Sildan won't be okay with that. I could teach you how to sneak out. Roll Persuasion, Nissa. Two. I mean, that'd be really cool, but no, I, I, I can't. I owe it to Uncle Sudan. Uh, from a different perspective, if we try to sneak her out, that's kind of stomping on the goodwill that everybody here showed us. No, I'm not trying to intrude. I was just offering you an opportunity. I appreciate it, but I really should stay here. Hey, who knows? We've asked for a little aid. Maybe Sudan will see if it and have you join us of uh, his own free will. Seems unlikely you'll get to go, though. Probably not, but I can always try. I can talk to him. He listens to me a lot. We're close. Thank you, Aleth. It's been interesting. It has. Our paths will probably cross again at some point. I don't doubt it. My mom likes to find uh, other people with psionic powers, so I'm sure at some point we'll all get a chance to talk together. Do the mystics get together? My mom organized a bunch of them to kind of help fight back against the Whispered Ones who, you know, experimented on them or their families. They're bad people, so my mom tries to get other psychics to help take them out because... The whole psychic thing was kind of... Originally, I think it was a side effect of whatever the experiments were. Well, perhaps it could be something more. We haven't found anything to the contrary, but that's possible. Perhaps we should enjoy our food now and engage with the others. Probably a good idea. And she will retreat as the Mind Palace kind of fades. All of you are, like, just seem to slip out of the Mind Palace and come back fully into yourselves. Take a moment. Are you all right, Shannon? Yeah, I was just thinking about the implications of a lot of things. I understand. There is much that we have talked about. Yeah. So, Scrave, you're able to get some some stuff on various fighting styles, which they do have a few copies of as well, which they can give to you so you can just take them, as they do do some transcribing here. Nice. It's all very pretty, too. The handwriting, the style. Because Kensei's have to master the way of the brush, which is either painting or calligraphy. And that's why you see some of both. You see scrolls that have artwork primarily on it. You see scrolls that have text on it. And that's why I know calligraphy. Yep. But you guys will eventually be allowed to leave the monastery and head back to Orenthal just as the sun is setting. Or you'll arrive at Orenthal just as the sun is setting. I guess as we're walking back to the city, um, I will kind of just quietly just say, 
to Umbra if there is anything you wanted to talk about tonight. So, Akiva, you're pausing to see if you can get in contact with Umbra? Yeah. You will acquire the Blade of Tenebris, right, Akiva? Yes, that is our intention. No, you will acquire. Your intention does not matter. You will make sure it happens. Yes. Good. This will benefit both of us. I will learn what I need to learn. You will gain more power in exchange to be able to do what you need. Is what you learn something you'd be willing to share with me? I seem to have a vested interest in what pertains to you. If what I learn is useful, I will happily share it. Because despite how it seems in terms of servant and master, I guess, right now, but you've been a great help and I do want to assist you any way I can. I will have a task for you once this first one is complete. Another I am sure you will not have any problem wanting to do, but we must focus on the task at hand. Collect the Blade of Tenebris. I will. So, you guys arrive in Orenthal, give the Staff Federation a wide berth that have increased their surveillance on the Cold Battle Gardens, but get to Belinda's apartment safe and sound and are able to retire for the evening before whatever tasks you decide to do the next day. Everyone can go to their own little cozy area. And now, a brief message from Leuven. Hi, I'm Leuven Cromdell. It goes without saying that I love partying and meeting new people. And, like most adventurers, I also have the good fortune of perfect health. But for the sake of those of us who are more vulnerable to COVID-19, I'm committing to social distancing as much as possible until this crisis has passed. I hope you'll join me and become my pen pal in the meantime. Just, you know, please don't lick the envelope. Thanks. Hey, this is Nick, the player for Leuven Cromdell. During these troubled times, we here at D&D Raw are keenly aware of the importance of entertainment media to help all of us get through. It is in this spirit that we're expanding the Nebersol network to include sending spells through electronic mail. Would you like to write a letter to Leuven? Well, now you can. Please address your letter to dm at dndraw.com, and Tony will make sure your message gets where it needs to go. Thank you. The next day, you guys wake up in the morning in Belinda's apartment. Uh, what's the plan for the day? Well, I think we have today to lay some preparations. I know we need to go confront this uh, Kindral and Sedan, and I'd like to have some more information before we do that. Uh, Nissa, I know you had a lead on where you might be able to find Lyle or pick up his trail. The running pickaxe in the Iron Fist district. Do you want to go by yourself, or...? I mean, I can. I'm used to being on my own and snooping, but... Well, my thought is it might actually help to have some allies, since I don't know if you just want to go right in and ask questions or snoop around, but it might be nice to have different tools at your disposal. I have a, someone I could go reach out to who might have some information, and also, uh, Scriv, I could go drop off our reports this morning. Thanks. I just finished putting the last touches on it. Yeah, so that wouldn't take me long, just connecting with an old friend here in Orenthal, so that would give you guys time to go together. So if we're going to be facing down the Dragonborn with this gun thing, is there a scroll for some sort of defense? Is there a way to neutralize it? Because... He seemed pretty confident that just that thing was enough to take out all of us. I think the problem is we haven't seen it being used in person, so we're not entirely sure if it's magical, if it's like technological or a combination of the two. It's more of a mechanical thing than anything else. Okay. So how do we fight against it? Same way you would fight against an archer at close range? I mean, I don't think there's that much that's different. It's a projectile that can pierce through you and harm you. Okay. I mean, shields are still effective then? Yeah. I mean, it's just metal. I mean, not that I want to have metal going through my person, but... That sound about right, Nissa. Close quarters fighting more with this guy then than, than anything? Nissa and Belinda, you can both make intelligence checks. Nissa, you can do with proficiency to see what you know about guns in this world. Twelve. Fifteen. Between the two of you, you both know that... Guns are rare in the world. It takes quite a bit to train to use one, because simply loading it is a procedure in and of itself, normally. While they can do a lot more damage than a normal bolt from a crossbow or an arrow from a bow, at close range, it is very difficult to hit someone. Also, 
they tend to be a bit more fragile than, like, a crossbow is because of the mechanical features. I think, honestly, it's more about the confusion or shock factor of I have this contraption that I can use to harm you. It's almost more of a psychological weapon than I think it is having a huge combat advantage. Also, it's really loud. So we don't need to worry about it being a subtle attack to eliminate us if he uses this gun. I mean, I think there's a reason he didn't fire any bullets off when he first saw us. In a cave, alone, with just us? Yeah, he did come behind a magical wall and and just appear. No, but I imagine there might have been some other repercussions to shooting off a projectile in this cave. But I think it was more of just a tool of intimidation at that point, and I wonder if that's generally how it goes down, but... Nothing wrong with preparing. It's still pretty early technology, so I think there's a lot of downsides and perhaps dangers to using one as well. If we want to take him in alive, we need some sort of neutralizing agent, whether it's like a sleeping potion or poison or something else. Poison, you know, Scriff, from your research, is expensive. Also illegal. Yes. So it sounds like we need to get some items to prepare for this mission, for lack of a better word. What do you guys think we need? Definitely need something to tie him up if we're taking him alive. We are taking him alive, right? That's certainly plan A. I don't really want to kill someone as a first, you know, first line of offense. But also, we want to learn more about what the Whispered Ones are doing, and turning him over to the proper authorities would be the best option. Well, then we need some way to, I guess, put him to sleep. But everything that I know about poisons and potions says that, well, it's expensive and illegal. Expensive and illegal don't go well. Yeah, save your pennies. I have a spell that will, if it works, will put him to sleep. Oh, okay. Even better. I'm I'm just used to Belinda kind of, I guess, thinking really hard at someone and then and then they start bleeding from their nose. I'm very persuasive <laughs> or intimidating. I've heard both. My only concern with that is the whispered ones, from what they told us, had dealings with creating these psychic beings in the past, so I wouldn't say it's too far-fetched to think they would have some semblance of defenses against it. Possibly. But it's different from magic. Well, and also Esvel has infiltrated this far as a mystic, so I'm hoping that means they have some blind spots that we can exploit. I think getting more information is the best thing I can do to contribute, but from the uh, sort of more mechanical perspective, I think restraints are a great idea. I think we just have rope right now, which is not very quick, effective, or, well, the best option. Yeah, so I think the sleep might be a good, like, plan A. And then plan B could be brute force, knock him out. So we go to the the running pickaxe. Mm-hmm. And on our way back, we just pick up some manacles. Yeah, you should be able to buy those. Perfect. Sounds like a plan. You all eventually leave Belinda's apartment. Uh, Henrietta says hello and... Wishes you all a good day. But that's it. Like, Blinda, you go off to uh, turn in your reports and meet with some friends. You find Bartholomew waiting, not as relaxed as the last time you saw him here. A little bit more animated than before. Just kind of pacing about. Definitely seems to be waiting. I'll walk up and say, we can't keep meeting like this. Oh, such a surprise as always. Belinda, so good to see you. How are you? less anxious than you. Well, I suppose I might as well get this out of the way. It's always best to give bad information quickly. However, so far I have been successful in what you have assigned of me. So there is that. Good news. Let's hear the bad news. Bad news is they're coming back here. They being... I don't know specifically who, but while I was in Shorten's Ridge, there were a lot of questions being asked as, you know, Faithfulness was traveling around, of course. She was very comfortable in the area and then another tiefling woman showed up with a dragonborn demise faithfulness's sister well faithfulness then decided to travel uh, just a couple days before demise arrives you know it's just a shame they missed each other of course of course you know how it is but when you don't communicate often even sisters lose touch ships passing in the night demise is still on the the hunt but I've, I've given myself a bit of a buffer room on that. This dragonborn, though, he's on his way back to Orenthal, maybe a day or two out. Which one is it? A day or two? He will arrive by tomorrow, early in the morning. From Chorton's Ridge? Yes. I 
increased my pace to make sure I could get here in time. You're a consummate professional. That's why you tend to keep me around. Well, I guess we can assume he's probably going to take the most direct route to the city gate. Northeastern. How's he traveling? By caravan. There's a few people around. A lot of merchants coming in. Not alone, I don't think, but I'm not sure how many. You're not sure how many of the caravan are with him? Not much. Most of those are legitimate merchants. I mean, specifically number of people. I'm uncertain how many he's bringing with him. Okay. So by tomorrow. It's good information. Let's see if it holds up. You know I always provide. For the right price. Well, I still have some allies who are helping to keep faithfulness moving. You require further compensation? I mean, there's no room, board, people who need to make sure the job gets done. I'll pay you the usual rate. Just confirming, you know. I always hold up my end of the bargain. That you do. I like working with you. You're so reliable. That's how everyone describes me. Primarily. Reliable. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Dependable. Consistent. Shady. I mean... No one would dare. Not to your face. No, not to my face. You know I care so much what people think. Oh yes, you're just constantly worried about what they say about you behind your back. I know how it feels. I understand. Our line of work. Because you're a vain creature too? Terribly, terribly vain. That's why you look for constant affirmation about the quality of your work. Affirmation is always good, but it kind of holds uh, a hand and rubs his two fingers together. You know that helps too. Coin is better, and I will hand over his payment. Thank you very much. Any other additions to this job that you would like, or just continue keeping faithfulness moving? That's all for now. Well, I'll be in town for a little while while my allies help to push this along, but please let me know if there's anything else I can do to help out. Yes, I know how to find you. Till next time. And he will scuttle off. The rest of you head towards the Iron Fist District, where Nyssa has been a few times. This area is uh, dotted with large stone buildings and tall chimneys that dot the landscape, smoke almost constantly rising during the day as the sounds of hammering of, from smithing and tinkering can be heard all around. In many of the uh, taverns that you pass by, you can hear raucous laughter and sounds of clinking of plates and cups and all sorts of very loud voices. Nissa, you recognize the uh, running pickaxe. It is made of clay bricks and marble stones, make up most of the building's outer structure. They have large curtain windows that kind of cover the inside, but as you approach, you can hear uh, music and songs from within. Opening through the doors, the music, of course, intensifies, is louder. Uh, you notice the bartender, uh, a dwarven woman, off in some sort of conversation. But as you walk in, she lifts her head and, and greets all of you with a friendly nod and kind of just gestures. If you want any tables around, feel free to go ahead and pick one and she'll be with you shortly. Rounded stone beams support the upper floors with candles attached all along them. Not currently lit, as there is still sunlight flowing through from the early morning. The walls are overflowing with various signatures, written messages from seeming like happy customers here. Though there seem to be some spaces where some may have fallen or been damaged over occasional drunken squabbles. The tavern is packed. Uh, I would like to note I am in disguise. You're disguised as uh, I'm done, right? Yes. Nissa, you do notice a, a particular dwarf that you see near the entranceway. His black hair and beard both speckled with gray. The thick, bushy beard that he keeps up uh, kind of tucked into his belt because of how long it is. His blue eyes, deep tan skin, good old Colbane as he goes by. Uh, he is speaking to another man. Has long, wavy black hair and amber eyes, smooth golden skin. Um, looks half-elven. And you see a scar across this man's face that stretches from his left cheek across his uh, to his right lip and ends at his right jaw. He's wearing dark studded leather armor with a dagger on each side and what appears to be a hand crossbow strapped to his back. And they're speaking animatedly. What's the play here, Anissa? I'll point them out that I, I know somebody over there. Okay. So at that point, Grave, you do recognize that the conversations, like, they seem frustrated, but... You can read lips. Yes, I can. They're speaking Dwarven. 
you see them, uh, their sides, you see their profiles. So you catch enough of the conversation that it sounds like they're talking about they have no proof and it's hard to make a move without proof. Okay, I bring this up to Nissa's attention. They're also speaking a little cryptically, but for some reason it just makes sense to you. Yeah, does it strike me as shop talk kind of? Yeah, there's a couple of points where they uh, seem to make just like innocent looking hand gestures that you're like, wait, no, that means this. That they're like threat, friend, like on and off, back and forth. That's weird. They're using shop talk. But yeah, they're talking about proof and stuff. Sounds like maybe they're talking about your friend. Could they be looking for him? I think maybe time to go over and say hi. We approach from the outer section of the walls because we don't want to go through that crowd. Fortunately, they are at a table near the entranceway. So it's not far. Uh, There's just a couple of tables in between. And you walk right up to old Colbain and his uh, companion. The conversation starts to die down as you get closer, and you see the gestures slow, and Colbain turns as he realizes, Ah, Nissa, how are you doing today? Well, look what the cat dragged in. How you doing, old man? Eh, just enjoying some good breakfast here. Been quite a, quite a busy few days, you know, without the extra pair of hands that I used to have. How have your own adventures been? I hear you've been uh, wandering about a bit. Yeah, I've been here, there, and everywhere. These hands have been busy, man. Sorry I'm not around to help pick up your slack. Yeah, yeah busy, all right. I hope that you're uh, keeping them clean. They're always clean. I don't know what you mean. Look, see? They're just pristine. Who are your friends? This is Scriv Whitecliff, and this is... I'm done. He is taking a tour around Orenthal. I'm showing him around. Oh, well, very good. I hope you enjoy our fine city here. And Scriv Whitecliff, a, a pleasure. I'm, well, you can just call me Old Colbane. That's what everyone else does anyway. Apologize, this is uh, my friend Gar. Pleasure to meet you, Gar. Nice to meet you. He just does a slight nod. A pleasure. I'd like to use shop talk. Just say friend. Just sign that. Scriv recognizes that. So do the two at the table. There's a slight pause, and so, uh, we're able to find anything useful out, uh, out on your various jobs, Nyssa? Mm, bits and pieces. Few things. Few things. Anything you might be particularly interested in knowing yourself? Gar kind of leans forward. Well, we were discussing ways to, uh, help a mutual friend of ours. He is... he's in a bit of a bind, and we're trying to see if you know, we can loosen those restraints. I believe we have mutual interests. He's helped me out quite a bit, and I like to help those who help me. So, is there anything you can provide us that would prove his claims? I may have some documentation that may prove said innocence. Well, that would be quite useful if you can provide it. I can take them to people who can make change and remove others from positions of authority, or at least I can personally act and intervene if need be. Help is always very much appreciated, and I definitely want to aid my friend, but no offense to you, I don't know you. This is the first time I've met you. Oh, my sincerest apologies. I simply go by Gar as a uh, Precaution. I like to keep my real name to myself, but, you know, we all play a part in what we do. Some of us are different. He does a sign for, like, Wolf? So I'll pull the documents out and hand them over to him. And he will take a few minutes to look through them. This will be very beneficial for all of us, then. We can deal with this thorn in our side. Is he planning anything that you're aware of? that might hinder a quiet removal of him. He'll be getting in contact with me shortly for me to meet a contact of his. All right. Uh, Do you have a time frame on this? Because usually removal takes a little bit of time to put into effect. However, if we keep proof, we can act a bit swifter. I believe it'll be within a day. Swifter it is, then. Do you know where? No, not yet. 
Very well. By removal, is it more of a temporary or permanent set of circumstances? It would not be temporary. Uh, The position he holds is one of influence, and we don't want someone who has influence abusing such influence. We would make sure that they would not be allowed to use such influence ever again. And the reprisals would just be for him, not the associate he's planning on meeting? I mean, any threat to our group and what we do would be dealt with, again, as swiftly as possible. Look over at Nyssa, just raising an eyebrow. I lean over to Nyssa and whisper, We needed Kindral, so you have more clout in this conversation than I do. Well, I agree for the most part with your sentiments. The person I am set to meet, myself and my associates, we would like to keep him alive. He has a lot of valuable information. He's more useful alive than dead. Well, I mean, if he is has plenty of information, I'm sure that we'd be willing to share it with you once we were done. We may have ways of getting that information ourselves, and I will raise my hand, and then in my hand I'm going to cast Silent Image, just, just an illusion, but it will be like a little ball of fire, and then quickly put it out. I mean, we all have skills at our disposal. Would you be willing to share the information up the chain, Nissa, if you acquire it? We have mutual interests, I'm sure. Yeah, I can share what I find. He's going to just kind of lean back a little and think, what if, in the off chance, we are unable to capture? Are you prepared to do what is necessary? It is not something you know we like to do, but if we are left with no choice, can you? I'll always do what's necessary to protect my family. He looks over at uh, Colbane, and you see him, like, has kind of a little bit of a cocky grin on, like he fully expected you to say exactly what you would. He's just like, proud papa moment type of deal. Colbane is proud. Colbane. And Gar just does a little slight nod to Colbane, and Colbane goes, behind the bar, there's a door there. Go ahead and open it. Third door on the left. Tap three times, then twice. Okay. Gar says, do you have any idea of a general area? Nope. All right. Well, I suppose I'll be around. Let me know, and I can help. Will do. I appreciate it. Say hi for me. Will do. And he's going to just go back to casually talking about Colbane, about how, you know, things are going. How's the shop? How is everything? And he'll nod to the two of you as well and just be like, a pleasure to meet both of you. A pleasure. Same. I give Osik a little, like, nudge and a grin and then walk off. And that is where we're going to leave this episode for today. Thank you all for listening. Please share this with your friends and follow us on Twitter at Rules as Written or check out our website, dndraw.com. And feel free to email any questions to our DM at dm at dndraw.com. Also subscribe and leave us a review or comment anywhere podcasts are found. If you want to support us, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash dndraw. Thank you for joining us on our adventures. Thank you.